sleep warriors. If you have a diagnosis of sleep apnea, I bet many of you had a home apnea test or HAT for short to get the diagnosis. Well, you aren't alone. Home apnea tests are cheaper, easier, and more comfortable than in-lab polysomnograms or PSGs, which require spending the night away from home hooked up to a bunch of wires. With the large number of people out there that need sleep studies and long wait times to get into the lab, home apnea tests are quickly becoming the most common diagnostic sleep test for obstructive sleep apnea. But are they accurate? Well, it depends. I'll help simplify this issue in part one of this two-part series on at-home sleep testing. I'm going to discuss three primary differences between at-home and in-lab sleep testing, and next week I'll explain who is best suited for each and how these differences can impact the diagnosis and treatment of sleep apnea. So besides the obvious difference of one being at home in your own bed and the other being in a sleep center, the first and biggest difference between an at-home sleep study and an in-lab sleep study is what is measured. In the lab, brain waves are measured, which is called EEG. And EEG measures whether you're asleep or awake and your sleep stages like REM or dreaming sleep. EEG also determines if sleep apnea is disrupting your sleep or causing arousals. Whereas at-home sleep studies don't have EEG, so breathing events are scored only if there's an associated oxygen desaturation with them. While in the lab, a breathing event can be scored if there's an oxygen desaturation or if it disrupts your sleep by causing an arousal on the EEG. Because of this, in-lab sleep studies are more sensitive at picking up sleep apnea and a more accurate measure of the severity. The second primary difference between at-home and in-lab sleep studies is that in the lab, technologists are present throughout the night to be sure that the signals are accurate. If the oximeter slips off for your finger, no problem. The techs put it right back on. They can also help be sure that you spend time in all different sleep positions, such as on your side and on your back, which can have different levels of apnea. The third and final difference between these two types of studies that I'll discuss is that in the lab, CPAP treatment for sleep apnea can be started during that first night study. If your sleep apnea is significant, most in-lab sleep centers will wake you up and start you on CPAP therapy. This hands-on treatment during your first night with CPAP can be really helpful. Okay, I've given you a lot of information. Now the question becomes, how do I know if I should have an at-home or an in-lab sleep study? Stay tuned for next week when I will address this question in more detail. But the short answer is that if your home apnea test is negative for sleep apnea, but you have symptoms of sleep apnea, like sleepiness, loud snoring, non-refreshing sleep, then I recommend you follow it up with an in-lab study because a home test can miss sleep apnea up to 25% of the time. So stay tuned next week when I will simplify who is most appropriate to head to the lab and who can afford to stay home. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week.